Hello and welcome to the new old computer show. This is a follow-up video to my previous video about modifying a Dallas clock chip. So if you haven't watched that one yet, I suggest you uh, do that first before watching this one. Now, I'm incredibly humbled and pleased by the, uh, inc the incredible response from the previous video um, and uh, all of the, the rigorous debate and uh, a lot of knowledgeable and, uh, and helpful comments in the uh, comment section and uh, I, I learned a lot and um, as it turns out uh, there was a, uh, a pr pretty strong suggestion that I uh, install this mod incorrectly uh, for this chip uh, namely that um, this chip has already an internal uh, oscillator that generates a, uh, a clock signal so that connecting an external uh, oscillator to generate yet another um, Clock with clock signal with the same frequency uh, is uh, unnecessary and may even be harmful. I, I want to uh, validate that the hypothesis is uh, correct and uh, uh, read up on some uh, some documentation and uh, do some measurements before uh, before taking any further action. So um, I think a good first step is to uh, revisit the uh, the documentation uh, that we looked at last time. So. Uh, Let's do that. So uh, here is the, uh, the very same uh, data sheet that I was looking at last time. Um, it is the real-time clock uh, data sheet for uh, Dallas uh, clock chips. Something that's um, um, important to keep in mind when you look at these is they often cover more than one uh, type variant of a, a particular component. So if you look at the the uh, margin here for this um, uh, this documentation, you see that this actually covers the uh, DS12885, 12887, 12887A, 12C887, and 12C887A. So um, you have to be very careful that to make sure that you look at the uh, the correct um, data for for the uh, component that, that you have in front of you. Um, so for instance, this typical operating circuit um, does talk about the external crystal here on X1, X2, but if you look closely, um, it says uh, right here that it, this is a DS12885 and not the DS12887 that I have. Um, so, if, you know, I think I was a little bit mm, misled by glancing at this, this very first uh, circuit diagram. So let's head down to the um, um, to the, the pin description that we used as a reference last time. So it says clearly here that uh, for the PD package, pin two and three uh, correspond to X1 and X2, uh, where X1 is the input to the oscillator. But if you look carefully, it says uh, on in, in a different column, namely the EDIP column, um, it's uh, there are dashes here indicating that these um, do not exist. So, well, as, a, as, as the amateur that I am, I didn't immediately realize what the difference between PDIP and EDIP are. I know, I know what DIP packages were. DIP packages are these uh, uh, ch chips that have, you know, two rows of legs um, uh, and then that are rectangular, you know, usually um, pretty, pretty long, um, that are, you know, through hole components. Um, very common in uh, most electronics. But there is a really handy uh, picture down here. Uh, it says pin configurations. And he, it says very, very clearly this is the PDIP on the left and this is the EDIP on the right. And if the, um, the shape of these two chips isn't hint enough, you can actually see that the uh, uh, the, the, the model names or the component variant names are clearly spelled out here and uh, the DS12887 that I have is this EDIP package whereas the DS12885 is the PDIP package and it's in the case of DS12887 2 and 3 are supposed to be not connected so, so where does that leave us? well um, what, what we know is that uh, we connected pin 2 and 3, uh, which are supposed to be NC, not connected, and hooked up a, an oscillator to them. 
Um, and we also know from, uh, from reading the documentation that the uh, uh, 12887 um, uh, chip is supposed to have an internal oscillator. Um, so did we in fact um, hook up two oscillators in serial? And what does that actually mean for the circuit? Um, we, we knew through uh, um, empirical testing that the clock did work and uh, we can check that in a moment that that's still the case. Um, but clearly doing the mod the wrong way hasn't caused any um, any obvious uh, malfunctioning uh, of, of, the, of the system. Um, that doesn't mean that it's, it's a good idea to have it hooked up like that. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, measure what kind of uh, uh, clock signals are being generated. And uh, yeah, for that purpose, I um, have my uh, oscilloscope hooked up. And sitting right over here, it's a USB-based uh, oscilloscope. Um, yeah, let's uh, prove with science uh, what's going on here. So here we have the computer up on the bench, the motherboard is sitting out here and uh, only the bare necessities are connected. We have a VGA card, we have power, and uh, we want to see if it still tracks the time because that's what, we, uh, that's what this Dallas chip is supposed to be doing. So we want to make sure that the chip is still doing its job. So let's turn on the computer. the BIOS. Let's have a look at the date and time right here. So there you have it. We have today's date. We have an accurate time. I think it's fair to say that it's able to keep track of time. So uh, let's exit out of there. Turn on, off the computer again for a moment. Now, the theory is that this chip, this revision of the chip, is generating, regenerating an internal clock signal. And we are also hooking up an external oscillator to it. So we have two, potentially two clock signals uh, competing with each other. And uh, that's probably not a good idea. So first, first off, we should measure what kind of clock signal we're getting from this chip on pin uh, 3. When the computer is off, so the the clock should be driven by the the battery here. And the next, let's remove the external oscillator from the circuitry and see if we're getting an internal clock signal from this chip. And uh, then we know for sure that we shouldn't be connecting an external clock to this chip. Let's hook up the ground lead to an appropriate place on the board, like so. And then let's measure pin 3. So on pin 3 right now, we are measuring a 32.769 kilohertz signal, which seems to... Uh, oops. Ground lead came off. Which corresponds to uh, the specification, uh, which says that the external oscillator should be a 32.768 kilohertz crystal. So that part of the circuitry uh, works perfectly fine. Now let's see what happens when we turn on the computer. So that seems to mess something up. Let's see what happens when we turn on the computer. So the signal jumped up a bit. It seems like it's the same signal, it's just that voltage was added. 
So that's the current state. Now let's uh, get the chip out of there and uh, disconnect the, uh, the external crystal and see what uh, kind of signal that we get internally. So by popular demand, I'm going to uh, socket the chip now. Um, I know this is a good practice in uh, in pretty much any case. Um, you know, as long as you're using a high quality socket and there is clearance inside of the computer after it's been reassembled. Um, in this case, I think uh, there are no reasons not to socket it at the end of the day. Um, so no further excuses. I, I brought out my uh, box of uh, of sockets and uh, luckily I had the right size in stock. It sits right over here. So uh, let's uh, grab a uh, machine pin socket uh, like so. This is a um, high quality socket. Let's get this uh, chip uh, desoldered again and of course Every time you take a chip in and out of a PCB like this, um, you're going to risk damage. And uh, so yeah, that's another reason that you do want to socket them when you have the opportunity. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, correct that miscalculation. And comes right out. So let's take our sockets and see if it uh, fits right right away. Yeah, it went in there pretty nicely. Pull it down some blue tack. One corner solder. Sold at the opposite corner. So So of course you want to make sure that when you solder a uh, a socket you want to align the notch on the, uh, the socket with the notch on the silk screen. Otherwise, you may confuse yourself later or a future owner of the board later. So it's in there nice and flush. So let's solder all of the pins. So next up, let's uh, remove the external uh, crystal from the circuit. So let's uh, just dis briefly desolder these uh, two leads and bend them out so that they are not connected.
Here, one bent out. And the second one is loose too. So uh, here we have right here. No, no crystal connected anymore. So let's return the uh, Dallas chip to the uh, motherboard. See how well it goes into the socket here. Uh, one reason that I didn't originally uh, want to use sockets is because these legs on this chip are just very very thin you may not get great contact in the socket now luckily I have high quality um, machine machine hole um, socket into the socket it went. Let's make sure we don't have any uh, bent pins. And also want to make sure that these uh, bent out legs are, are not shorting against anything. Which they don't seem to be. Let's see what happens when we put the battery back in. Like so. So there we go, we have a 32, well, it seems a little bit flat right now, let me ought to adjust this for a moment, but at least we're seeing a 32.76 um, kilohertz signal. So this, there's clearly um, a, si a signal coming from uh, inside the chip. Now let's see what happens when we turn on the computer, if you're seeing something differently from before. Once the computer is on, we're measuring about a 30 megahertz signal. So since we concluded that uh, we don't need to hook up the, uh, the crystal, uh, by all means we should uh, remove the two legs that uh, uh, connect the crystal to the, to the chip. Since we don't want things that can short out against other things more than absolutely necessary. Uh, so let's uh, pop the chip out one last time and, uh, and get those legs uh, removed. Let's take out the the battery and gently uh, pry the chip out of its new socket. So this is when it's very handy to have have this in a socket so we can um, pop it out and uh, back in as much as we uh, like. So let's just hold on to, uh, to the legs with our tweezers as we heat the pads and just pull them right off like so, one of them is out, the one is out, and that would uh, reduce our exposure to uh, short risks. And uh, this poor, this poor crystal will just sit there unpowered and unhappy, uh, but uh, what can you do? Maybe uh, one day if I uh, 
run into a 12885 chip, I can uh, swap this uh, mod board over to that and uh, do something else with this chip. And one final thing, it was also uh, I called out in the comment section um, that uh, we should be covering up the leads um, uh, with some sort of a, a pr protective uh, coating. And uh, I have a cheap way of doing this with uh, uh, this uh, clear nail polish lacquer. So uh, I just want to put a little bit of that on top of these two leads since we, we don't want them to be exposed like so and we can leave it to uh, to dry and uh, for good measure we can also do it on these two leads like so hopefully that gives us a little bit more of a peace of mind. So we can clearly see that the Dallas 12887 uh, chip can generate a clock signal internally and does absolutely not need the external uh, crystal connected. If you have something like a Dallas uh, 12885 chip, um, it's according to the spec, it does not have the internal um, oscillator. So if you have a 12885 chip and uh, one of these mod PCBs, then um, it's very handy uh, to have the oscillator hooked up because um, then you get the same functionality as a uh, 12887. So thank you again everyone who commented, uh, all the vigorous debates in the comment section. That was incredibly interesting and uh, I I uh, I'm humbled by y'all's uh, know-how and expertise in this in this space. I'm still very much learning. I'm just having a lot of fun uh, figuring these things out. And so thanks everyone for watching. And uh, if you if you do enjoy what what I'm doing, um, don't hesitate to to hit that like button and um, please do subscribe. I intend to uh, uh, keep putting up videos of um, uh, projects that I do. So uh, have a great rest of your day and. Uh, See you all next time. Bye.